Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today, we are here to begin delivering on a recent promise. With the aim of introducing our clients to all Microtech products to familiarize you with the capabilities, features, and usages of Microtech's items, we have started a new series of videos titled Microtech Hardware. In a previous video, we gave you an overview of all Microtech products, the first category of which is Ethernet routers. In this first session of Microtech Hardware videos, we want to start from the top of the Microtech's hardware list and talk about the HEX series of Microtech Ethernet routers. The HEX series includes HEX, HEX Lite, HEX PoE, HEX PoE Lite, HEX S, PowerBox, and PowerBox Pro. These five items are specifically made for indoor use, while the bottom two, that is PowerBox and PowerBox Pro, are outdoor hardware. If you recall, each Microtech product has a commercial name such as HEX and its unique corresponding product code such as RB750GR3. The product code of each Microtech hardware is carefully devised to indicate the type and different features of each item. Starting with HEX, the letters RB stand for router board. The next character, that is number 7, indicates that HEX belongs to the 7th or 7XX series. The next number, which is 5, indicates the number of Ethernet or SFP ports, and the third number shows the number of wireless interfaces of the device, which is zero for HEX as an Ethernet router. For comparison, we can look at a Microtech device in the wireless for home and office category, such as the Half Light, whose product code starts with RB941, indicating that this device has one wireless interface. The letter G stands for gigabit port, showing that HEX has 10 100 1000 or 1 gigabit ports. And finally, the small r stands for revision, and together with the number 3, it indicates that this product is the third generation or a revision of a previous model. The next item, the HEX Lite, is also a revision, which is shown by the characters R2. If you refer to the list of discontinued products via the archive filter, you can see three items of the RB750 series that are the first version of RB750 products. Up next, we have the HEX PoE, which belongs to the 9XX series of router boards. For the HEX PoE, the number 6 indicates that the device has six wired interfaces, and the letter P stands for power injection with controller. The capital S at the end means that this device has an SFB or SFB Plus port, and thus the number 6 in the middle represents 5 Ethernet ports and 1 SFB port. As for the product code of the HEX PoE Lite, the only new character is capital U, which shows that this hardware has a USB port. And in the HEX S, we have some of the previous characters, as well as a small I, which stands for Single Port Power Injector Without Controller. Next, we have the power box that has the letters PB in its product code. PB stands for the word power box, showing that this device is secured in this outdoor enclosure. And finally, we have the power box pro whose product code is made up of some of the characters mentioned in the previous items. If you refer to the router OS main menu of the Microtech wiki and click on the product naming submenu, you can read all about Microtech abbreviations and acronyms and understand what each character means in Microtech's items' product codes. Bear in mind that although most product codes follow the naming rules in the product naming wiki, you might come across a few exceptions here and there. As mentioned in previous videos, each Microtech product has its own specific page in which you can find their highly useful specifications table. The contents of the specifications change based on the features and functions of each product, and you should pay close attention to them to understand the capabilities of each hardware. Referring to the specifications of the HEX, for instance, after the product code, we can see relevant information on its CPU, including architecture, core count, and speed. Next, we have the dimensions, as well as its OS and OS license level. As previously mentioned, Microtech devices either work with router OS or with switch OS, with the exception of some dual boot devices that work with both of these operating systems. 
Afterward, we have the RAM size, storage capacity, and storage type, followed by each device's MTBF. MTBF stands for mean time between failures and indicates the average time between system breakdowns. As can be seen, the MTBF for these devices is about 100,000 hours at 25 degrees centigrade, which is equal to more than 11 years. Given the very low price of these MyFitic devices, you are just paying a dime for a hardware that can last more than a decade. Moreover, you can see the range of temperature within which this device has been tested and can operate, as well as its IPsec hardware acceleration feature that only exists for HEX and HEX-S among these seven items. In the powering section, you can see the device's number of DC power inputs as well as its input voltage of 830 which means this device can be turned on by a 12 volt battery. Going further down, you can see the max power consumption and max power consumption without any attachments. Max power consumption without attachments demonstrates the amount of power consumption when the device runs in a stable mode without any specific traffic or outer attachments such as USB devices and other cables. It should be noted that micro devices compared to similar items have a significantly lower power consumption rate, an important feature that contributes to device durability, power expenses, as well as green energy and environmental efforts. Also, the fan count on this device is passive, which means that it does not have a fan. One very important piece of information for marketing devices is the PoEN feature. This enables us to use power injector accessories such as RBPoE together with an adapter to power these devices. This helps us to use power failover for such small hardware. Bear in mind that in case your hardware's PoE in is passive, you will not receive a 48 volt PoE out, for example, if you attach a 48 volt PoE in to your hardware. In a device with a passive PoE in, the only way we can receive a specific PoE out voltage is to attach an equal power source directly to the DC power jack. Moving down the specifications, you have the Hexas Ethernet ports information, which include 5 gigabit ports, as well as the hardware's peripherals, including a micro SD card and a USB port. Remember though, that these pieces of information can change in case a device has different types of features, functions and options, such as SFB ports and the like. Next, you have other miscellaneous features of the device and finally, the official certifications of the hardware as well as its IP or International Protection Code. Now that we are familiar with the specifications of our hardware, we can go back to the hardware menu to compare these items to better understand their differences. Starting with HEX and HEX Lite, the very first difference is in the type of their Ethernet ports as well as their CPU architecture, model and processing power. Also, they have slightly different input voltages, and their max power consumption shows an 8 watt difference. This difference between the power consumption of these two devices is attributed to the CPU acceleration feature of the HEX, which we'll discuss later. Moreover, you can see that the HEX also comes with a micro SD memory card slot. The USB information has been scattered a bit within the comparison table. As you can see, we have the maximum USB current on each device in the middle of the table and moving down, we have the number of USB ports, the availability of USB power reset and USB slot type. The next difference is the availability of a router board temperature monitor for the hex and there is also a slight difference in the PoE in input voltage concerning the passive PoE of both devices. And finally, we can see that the hex enjoys a bigger RAM size as well as the existence of a voltage monitor. Up next, we will compare the hex light and the hex PoE light. These two items are fairly the same, with some slight differences in the CPU speed and maximum power consumption. However, if you look closely, the max power consumption on the hex PoE light without attachments is 3 watts. Therefore, it can be concluded that it's actually all the other devices attached to hex PoE light that run up power consumption. With their roughly similar PoE in features, the main difference between these two devices lies in the PoE out feature of the hex PoE light, 
which is available on its Ethernet ports 2 to 5. Also, Hex PoE Lite enjoys the availability of a USB port. Our next comparison is between the Hex and the Hex S. The first difference between these two items is the notably higher input voltage of the Hex S as well as its maximum output of 500 mA on its ports. Note that since the Hex S has a PoE out on only one of its ports, the maximum output and the maximum output per port are the same. Otherwise, this number would have been divided among different output ports. And also, these two devices have different power consumption rates. However, you can see that the maximum consumption becomes quite similar once you remove their attachments. One of the most important differences between these two items, however, is that the PoE in feature of the Hex S is active, shown by the AF slash AT value written here. An active PoE in means that if you attach, for example, a 48 volt PoE into the Hex S, you can also receive an equal 48 volt PoE out. Also, the Hex S has a passive PoE out on its Ethernet port number 5, and it comes with an SFB port as well. The addition of this SFB port, however, has made a small change to the case of the Hex S, and unlike Hex, in which the SD card was located near the power jack, the Hex S has its memory card slot on the side, since the SFB port has filled the space next to the power jack. And our last comparison is between the Hex PoE Lite and the Hex PoE, that have different processing speeds, input voltages, and maximum power consumptions. Moreover, you can see that the Hex PoE has a higher input voltage on its passive PoE in, and unlike the Hex PoE Lite, the PoE out on the Hex PoE is active. Other than that, these two devices are fairly the same, except for the larger RAM size of the Hex PoE. And as for our two outdoor hardware items, that is PowerBox and PowerBox Pro, there is not much to tell, since the PowerBox is actually the same Hex PoE Lite inside a PowerBox enclosure, and the PowerBox Pro is a Hex PoE fitted within an outdoor enclosure. Putting the specifications aside, let's briefly look at the performance test results of these devices, referring to the Hex as a sample. As you can see, test results are given based on different device functions, and you may receive different tables here based on your hardware's capabilities. The values within each table are categorized based on transmitting packet sizes, as well as device modes and configurations. The first important issue here is that the speed in this table is the total throughput of the device for all of its ports. So for example, for the hex that has 5 gigabit ethernet ports, the different throughputs given here will actually be divided among all of its ports. You have probably noticed that for smaller packet sizes, the performance of the device has been reduced dramatically. Each data packet comes with different headers, that is a source MAC address and a destination MAC address on the Ethernet level, as well as a source IP address and a destination IP address on the network level. Now, when you are transmitting large data packets, your device is dealing with a number of headers for each packet. However, if you make your packets smaller, you will have to increase the number of packets in order to fill the volume of a given port. Therefore, you are actually increasing the number of all MAC and IP headers. So when you're using the bridging function, for example, you're only dealing with source and destination MAC addresses. If you make your packets smaller but increase their number, your total throughput for all ports inevitably drops. Now, if you add another configuration, such as the simple queue, you are also adding source and destination IP addresses to the mix, and this throughput will drop further down because for each single packet passing through each port, the device is checking source and destination MAC addresses and source and destination IP addresses. The important questions we need to ask here is what size of packets are we using? Are they large, small, or a bit of both? The second question is about the number of active users on our network. The third question deals with the bandwidth provided by our ISP. If we are going to use a certain bandwidth with a specific device, we need to look ahead and think about the scalability and growth of our network. It is better to invest in a device that will function properly at least in the near future than purchase a device that fulfills our current needs 
but fails to handle a greater workload. And the fourth question is whether we are transmitting a normal traffic or using encrypted data. Newer microwave devices such as HEX and HEX S have IPsec hardware encryption that enables them to accelerate the transmission of encrypted data over the network. Respectively, for these types of devices, you can access their IPsec test results that shows how our device performs while accelerating encrypted traffic. So, based on packet sizes, number of tunnels, and our configurations, the throughput can change for encrypted data. In this situation as well, you should browse Microtech's inventory to select the product that is most suited to your current and future connectivity needs and plans. For instance, for encrypted data, you can choose the CCR 1009 7G 1C1S Plus device that gives you much greater throughput for such encrypted traffic. Based on their functions, the HEX family of routers are more suitable for certain network projects. They are specifically appropriate for establishing VPN connections such as centralized VPN, site-to-site -site VPN, DNS or content filtering, as well as security and firewall configurations for home networks and small to medium businesses. Devices such as the HEX and HEX S, for instance, are particularly useful in this regard given their IPsec hardware encryption features. As for relevant industries, the education sector can greatly benefit from the HEX family based on their low prices, suitable CPU performance, and considerable lifetime. Similarly, for IT companies that handle online projects such as IT services, VoIP, or surveillance cameras, HEX routers can prove useful since they can be used to establish robust VPN connections. Event holders can also benefit from the easy portability, small size, and low power consumption of these devices. ISPs and WISPs can use the HEX hardware family for monitoring, remote troubleshooting, and even work from home purposes. And system integrators such as air conditioning manufacturers can also utilize the VPN capabilities of these devices such as centralized VPN for dispatching and monitoring purposes concerning their products that are connected to an online network. Thank you very much for watching everyone. We hope you have enjoyed this first episode of our new Microtech hardware series. In case you have any questions, let us know. And as always, we would love to hear all your comments and suggestions. Make sure you subscribe to our channel on YouTube so that you can be notified of our new tutorials and videos. And until next time, goodbye, stay safe, and take care.